What is going on everybody? Meta Breakdown episode 3 here. And we're going to be covering four different topics. So the first of which is going to be the patch that came out last week. Um, basically, several changes were made, but the most dramatic of those changes did come to the defensive side of the ball. Zone coverage was tuned, if you guys did not know, as well as the defensive line pass rush and block shedding was also altered a little bit but first and foremost I want to talk about the zone coverage because I think that is uh, the biggest change so since the patch came out people have been basically testing it trial and error seeing uh, kind of what ratings you know got affected and it's basically been found that 91 and above zone coverage has been the biggest change since the patch so basically the same threshold of that route running goes by so I made that video basically whenever the game first came out about the route running 91 and above route running is that threshold you want to meet uh, for your receivers to run those quicker cutting routes and it seems to be the same threshold for zone coverage uh, for your defenders to basically break on the ball I don't want to say as if they're psychic but they basically break as soon as the QB starts you know winding up to throw the ball they're already breaking on whatever receiver you're throwing the ball to they're making a beeline straight for them. So it's most, uh, you know, it can be seen basically most prevalently whenever you play, like, say, regs with a team like the Seahawks. You have Earl Thomas in the middle. Earl Thomas is going to be breaking on uh, literally everything right here. I went ahead and did some trial and error for you guys just, just to kind of show it off. Trying to throw this post route against a standard cover four with Earl Thomas. You're going to see kind of the outcome of me trying to throw and how quickly he's breaking. And then I'm going to do another trial where I sub out Earl Thomas, put in Bradley McDougal, who I believe is an 81 overall free safety. So not a scrub by any means, more of an average type of player. And you're going to see how much... Uh, less quickly he breaks on this route than Earl Thomas does as you can see Earl Thomas breaking on it pretty much every time and is in a position to make an interception almost every single uh, every single pass attempt so and this was a route that pre-patch against cover four uh, this was a route that was basically going to be open every single time no matter who you had playing free safety they weren't going to break on it and and you know undercut it and make a play on the ball so zone coverage biggest thing so um, that, that obviously affects not only Mutt, but also Regs. Um, Regs, I think the Seahawks were probably already the best team before the patch. And post-patch, I think they are by far the best team. I'll be getting into a Regs kind of tier list later on in this video. But I think with Earl Thomas, and then you have other guys like, I mean, Sherman and Chancellor, who they don't have over 91 zone coverage, but they are close enough to where they're still breaking on the ball pretty dramatically um 91 and above zone coverage seems like that is the magic number but still you're going to see a difference between saying like 90 and 89 zone coverage and someone who has like you know mid 70s uh, you're going to still see that difference so um i think the seahawks obviously the best team by far in regs now i think the patriots actually got shot up the tier list in my opinion offensive side of the ball not as dynamic as the seahawks but on the defense side of the ball, they do have Malcolm Butler and Devin McCourty, both who have over 91 zone coverage. So the Patriots are actually the only team in the game that have two players that meet that threshold as opposed to Seahawks only having one in Earl Thomas. And there are several other players or, or several other teams that have, you know, one guy who meets that. Um, I believe Eric Berry for the Chiefs meets it, Harrison Smith for the Vikings. So you have guys like that, but Patriots only team with two guys to meet that threshold so you know it remains to be seen maybe if that becomes even more important than i think maybe the patriots shoot up and overtake the seahawks as the best regs team still remains to be seen obviously pa or, um, seahawks d line still a lot better uh, than the patriots that's kind of a big reason um having michael bennett cliff averill and those guys rushing the passer frank clark uh, that that makes a big difference for your defensive line if you're, when you're playing with the Seahawks and also obviously offensive side of the ball. I think the Seahawks have better skill position players, more speed at wide receiver, and uh, you know obviously Russell Wilson. I think you take over Tom Brady in regs just because of the mobility factor. But I'll be getting into that a little later. So the patch, pretty big change. Um, uh, the second thing I want to talk about is uh, the tournament from the past week and kind of how that affected the meta. Um, I think you guys saw, if you guys watched the NYC tournament, 
Uh, you guys were able to see what a lot of the top players were running um, on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think it was really much of a surprise. You saw a lot of nickel 335 and 335 odd in particular, a lot of cover four along with the looping blitz out of that nickel 335 odd that I did a video on the other week. So I think that's definitely the meta defense as of right now. Um, obviously, there's still other defenses. You still see people running 4-6, some 3-4. Um, 4-3 very, very rarely, uh, but obviously with the weak box feature, um, dollar, you know, quarters, stuff like that, even big dime to an extent, kind of got washed out. You don't see it nearly as much this year as you do last year. You really have to be careful, especially if you're running um, against somebody who, you know, runs a lot of two tight end, one running back, two wide receiver personnel, um, and that's more common this year than last year because of the influx of, you know, effective formations, and namely that wing slot offset, gun wing slot offset formation. Uh, that That's a formation you see a lot more this year. It's new to Madden 18, and it carries that personnel that you can't go into something like dollar and have a weak box against, or else you're going to get pancakes. So, um, that's kind of what I expected to see at the tournament, so no surprises there. Offensively, I'm actually pretty happy with the meta right now. It seems to be pretty diverse. Uh, there's no one offense like last year. I feel like Gun Bunch was just by far the best offense you could run uh, this year. It doesn't seem to be the case. Gun Bunch is still relevant. Obviously, Skimbo won the tournament running a lot of Gun Bunch, but you see other things like Gun Bunch tight end. Boogs was running. Amanu was running trips tight end. Joel runs tight flex. Uh, you see, you know, multiple people who run those offenses. Uh, you see single back tight slots. I think uh, Ken was running that. And, and that's a popular offense you're going to see a lot online. And like I mentioned, you got the gun wing slot offset. Uh, you have a slot offset, which I think is still a good offense this year. Uh, and, and, you know, many others. So I think the offensive diversity is fantastic. I think it's a lot better to watch this year so far uh, than Gun Bunch was last year. Now, obviously still very early in the year. At this point last year, you know, Gun Bunch wasn't the juggernaut that it was. And so there's still plenty of time for kind of one formation or one playbook or one scheme to kind of rise to the top. And, you know, everybody kind of catches on saying, oh, okay, this is the best offense, so let's all run this. Um, but early on in the year, I think the diversity is a good thing, and I'm pretty happy with it as of right now. So that's pretty exciting. Um, let's see. So offensive meta, defensive meta, I guess next thing I want to talk about would be tier lists. So uh, I'll go ahead and talk about playbook tier lists right now. Um, I did a playbook tier list on my first meta breakdown, kind of touched on a little bit on the second one. Now this one, I think I'm going to change and move some stuff around. Um, so I'm going to still remain with the four tiers right here, S, A, B, and C. A little bit, a little bit of changes. I think S tier, I think Seahawks and Jets are still firmly in that S tier. I think Seahawks is probably the most popular playbook uh, for reasons I talked about, but just very, very diverse. You know, Gun Bunch, Gun Bunch tight end. Um, I believe you have wing slot offset, ace, pa ace slot offset, single back deuce close. That was another formation I forgot to mention. And when talking about offenses, a lot of people run single back deuce close, especially in offline tournaments where you can set your audibles and, you know, you can have the HB stretch and the HB wham at your disposal at the line of scrimmage, along with decent passing plays like tight end angle bench. Um, they have the PA stretch plays pretty decent. PA misdirection is pretty decent. So deuce close, definitely another a powerful formation. But yeah, so Seahawks and Jets definitely rise to the top. Jets mainly also have deuce close, but single back tight slots. Uh, they might have the best single back tight slots in the game, um, along with some other, you know, very good formations out of that playbook. Some other playbooks that I think are on the same tier, they might be a little bit below. I think they're better than A tier, but maybe not as good as S. I just kind of didn't make another tier for them. I think one book could be the Miami Dolphins playbook. I think that playbook has kind of skyrocketed over the past few weeks. Um, I know, uh, I believe Drini runs it and that's been I think a big factor in it kind of climbing in popularity but I think I've been seeing a lot more of it online at least because the only two playbooks in the game with gun bunch tied in available in mud at least are the Seahawks and the Dolphins and so I've been seeing a lot more of um you know that gun bunch tight end where I know it's not the Seahawks playbook because they'll be in formations that aren't in the Seahawks book and so uh, I know they have to be running the Dolphins. So I've been seeing that a lot more. I think it's pretty good. So I think that could make the leap into S tier. Now, 
Anything else going into S tier, I'm not completely sold right now. I think those three kind of reign supreme. I think the Patriots are super close, but I'm going to keep them in A tier for now. Uh, sliding out of S tier, I think the Packers, I overrated the Packers a little bit uh, at the jump. So they slid down to A tier. I still think they're a good playbook with gun tight offset tight end. One of the only two playbooks in the game along with the New Orleans Saints to have that formation. And then along with, you know, they still have a really good gun bunch. Might be the best gun bunch in the game. A good complementary formations. Why trips? Weak, obviously. Um, they have the doubles. Uh, is it doubles on? They have a pretty good doubles formation. It's not, it's, it's not a typical gun doubles. It's a little different. It's like a doubles flex or whatever. But uh, it's pretty good. I think it's good. And, uh, you know, a lot of other playbooks fall into this A tier. If it's in the A tier, I think it's uh, not quite as well-rounded as, you know, playbooks like the Jets, Dolphins, or Seahawks. But they're still very, very good. And they might specialize, you know, in one or two formations that they have that are, are really, really good. Like, I have the Texans in A tier um, only because, basically, I think Pistol Tight Slots still has... Uh, some stuff that is yet to kind of be uncovered. I think it's a formation. This is just kind of a personal opinion. I think it's a formation with a lot of potential. So I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody try and run a scheme out of that at some point this year, maybe at a tournament or maybe online. I'm, I don't know. Uh, but I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen it yet. So maybe I'm just overvaluing it. But for right now, for me, I think it's an A tier. Also, another playbook I didn't even touch on in, in S tier. I'm just realizing I kind of skipped over it. Titans. Um, I think the Titans, obviously, uh, you have gun tight flex, which is uh, very, very good this year. You have single back deuce close. You have, you know, gun bunch week, stuff like that. But it's mainly gun tight flex. I think it's one of only two playbooks along with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that has that formation. Um, but the Titans version is so much better than the Buccaneers. They have, it's mainly because they have PA post shot in the Titans and they don't have it in the Bucks. And that's possibly the best play in the game, at least top five, probably, I'd say. So, uh, yeah, whenever you have, you know, a top five play in the game that's only in your playbook, obviously that's going to vault you up the tier list. So I think they fall into S tier as well. Now, everything in B and C tier, I think, disclaimer, I think all playbooks are definitely viable this year. I don't think there's any playbook that's just like, oh, that playbook's so bad. Why would you even use it? I think all playbooks are viable. Um, a lot of this is just personal opinion. I think B tier just kind of has st a, a little bit more than the stuff from C tier has to offer. Not saying C tier has literally nothing, but a lot of the books in C tier, in my personal opinion, you know, have stuff that other playbooks, you know, in B or A tier might also have. But then, you know, the complementary stuff that I can find out of the books in B or A tier or even S tier is a lot better than the stuff in C tier. So you could still definitely have a scheme out of a C tier playbook using stuff that's also found in, you know, playbooks that are in B or A. But I just think the complementary stuff, if you want to kind of branch out and have other mini schemes or be very multiple on the offensive side of the ball, I think a lot of the stuff in, you know, your B, A, and S tier playbooks kind of trumps the stuff in the C tier. So that's kind of my reasoning uh, whenever I was breaking it down into tier lists. So obviously this is going to be very fluid throughout the year when with new schemes, new strategies coming out basically every single week especially early on in the life of the game so excited to be updating this throughout the year now for reg teams i kind of hinted at what this tier list might look like a little bit but basically gonna do the same style s tier a tier b tier uh and c tier so right here s tier i think the only team in the s tier right now is the seattle seahawks i think they're better than any other team i already touched on it i think their defense is the best in the game by a pretty wide margin, you have Earl Thomas, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor in the secondary in a patch in a meadow where, you know, zone coverage is, uh, you know, prevalent and the zone coverage rating is more important than ever before. I think Seahawks reign supreme. Also that D-line, Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill, Frank Clark, especially with, you know, the change in the patch with the D-line block shedding uh, makes the D-line, the dominant D-line just that much better. Offensive side of the ball, fantastic skill position players. Jimmy Graham, top tier tight end, top tier receivers in my opinion. Uh, between Doug Baldwin, who's just a great all around receiver, meets that 91 plus route running threshold. So you have a receiver that can run those crisp routes. And then you look at you know your other receivers, Paul Richardson, Tyler Lockett, guys like that. Very speedy guys who you know speed has never been a bad thing in Madden. Offensively in the backfield, you have. 
a uh, stable of running backs, really, between Lacey and Rawls. Now, updated rosters, Lacey not looking too good in real life, so I don't know how good he'll remain for the long haul, but Rawls should be solid, Procise will be solid, and then Chris Carson, you know, could end up making a little bit of noise in real life, and if he gets some decent, um, you know, stat increases throughout the year, uh, he could become a viable threat down the road. So, running backs, I think, are fine. You have a stable, um, and obviously quarterback, Russell Wilson, top-tier quarterback, especially in regs, uh, with that mobility, probably the best mobile pocket, or mobile passer uh, in the game as of right now. So, Seahawks firmly in that S tier. Now, A tier, I have the Patriots, the Falcons, the Cowboys, a little bit of a surprise right there, and the Steelers. So, I think those four teams, um, I think Patriots, I touched on earlier, basically why. Um, it's going to be because of Malcolm Butler and Devin McCourty um, on the defensive side of the ball. Their D-line, not that fantastic. You know, Trey Flowers can make a little bit of noise. Linebackers, not the greatest. You have Hightower, but aside from him, nothing super special. But that secondary is pretty solid. Offensive side of the ball, you have the weapons at your disposal. Not a ton of speed at wide receiver outside of Brandon Cooks. But you do have Julian Edelman, who reaches that 91 and above route running threshold. Obviously, you have Brandon Cooks. You have other guys, uh, such as, you know, you can throw Hogan in there as your third receiver. I'm comfortable with that. Obviously, you have Gronk at tight end. Brady at quarterback, who's going to be the most accurate passer, although you don't have the wheels. So if you're a guy who loves playing with a mobile quarterback, Patriots not going to be your team, obviously. So it's a team that's not going to be for everybody in the backfield. Similar to the Seahawks, you just have a stable. Gillisley, Deion Lewis, James White, and Rex Burkhead. Um, you can pick whichever one kind of fits your scheme the most. If you like passing to the running back, maybe you edge to the side of James White or Deion Lewis. If you're more of a downhill runner, if you want to run kind of like a um, wing slot offset or deuce close style of offense, maybe you go with someone like Mike Gillisley who's going to pound the rock a little better for you. So that's kind of where the Patriots are at. The Falcons, I think, um, obviously, were probably the best team all of last year in regs. And this year, coming into the year, I would have thought they would be the best. But after the patch, I think the Seahawks are the best. Um, the Falcons are still very solid, though. Obviously, offensive side of the ball, you have elite running backs, the best running back tandem in the league, Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman, Matt Ryan at quarterback, who's basically going to make all the throws you want him to make and has a little more mobility than someone like Tom Brady. Wide receiver, obviously, Julio, Sanu, Taylor, Gabriel, fantastic trio. Julio's a freak of nature, especially in regs. Gabriel's got the speed. Sanu's just a solid all-around receiver. Tight end, Austin Hooper, you could do worse. Um, defensively, a lot of speed at linebacker between, you know, guys like Deion Jones, Duke Riley. Um, in the secondary, obviously also pretty deep between guys like Trufant, Robert Alford. Um, I feel like I'm missing a third corner right now, and he's probably really off obvious, but he's just slipping my mind. Uh, but in the uh, at safety, obviously Keanu Neal, great safety. Um, so, Falcons very very well rounded and I would not have any problem with someone you know saying okay I want to use the Falcons I think I think they're a fine team to use in regs now Cowboys and Steelers I think might fall a little bit below the Patriots and Falcons in my opinion but they're better than to be able to put them in B tier and so A tier um I think they fall into kind of the bottom half of A tier I would put the Patriots and Falcons a little bit above them uh, but the Cowboys, obviously, fantastic O-line. Zeke in the backfield. Dak's a good quarterback. Mobile. Um, wide receiver, I think you're fine. Des Bryant, Cole Beasley, Terrence Williams. Even Bryce Butler, if you want to play him over Cole Beasley, is fine. Jason Witten at tight end. Not the fastest guy, but he's going to catch the ball in traffic. Defensively, that's where they kind of falter. I mean, other than Sean Lee and, like, Orlando Skandrick, Byron Jones, I guess. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of them. Defensively, you're going to have to play a pretty tough defensive game to be able to compete with them but if you love running the ball and you know you're committed to the ground game you run something like a deuce close offense and you're going to be running hp stretch and hp wham for most of the game and uh you know you're not going to be running a wide open offense or whatever you know cowboys i i could definitely see you picking the cowboys to use as i said obviously their strength that running game so I think the Cowboys fall into A tier. Steelers, I fall or I put into A tier as well. Offensively, 
uh, possibly, you know, the best running back wide receiver tandem with Bell and AB. Martavis Bryant is no scrub either. Jesse James, decent tight end with the speed. Um, obviously, Big, Big Ben going to make most plays for you at the quarterback position. Defensively, uh, they're kind of lackluster, in my opinion. Um, you've got guys like, obviously, Shazier and Bud Dupree, so you're going to have premier user defenders. But other than them, I mean, their their corners aren't spectacular. Safety's not spectacular. D-line, not fantastic. So, I mean, not bad, obviously, but not at the caliber of guys like, in my opinion, someone like the Falcons with Vic Beasley or obviously the Seahawks with Bennett and Averill and Frank Clark. So I think they fall into A tier mainly because of their offense. The Steelers, uh, they have one of the best offenses in the game. I think you could almost make a case they might have the best offense uh, between, you know, Le'Veon Bell, A.B., Martavis Bryant, and Big Ben. So I think whenever you have an offense that high-powered, I think you got to fall uh, into that A tier. Now, everybody else in B and C tier, I don't think you'll really be seeing almost at all in any reg tournaments. Um, I just think a lot of them are just straight-up outclassed. Like, it's it's a little different than the playbooks where, you know, playbooks you can maybe find something in a B or C tier playbook and, you know, that might also be in an A or S tier playbook, but you feel like running this playbook for whatever reason, so you make a scheme out of it and, okay, it's almost like you're running this A or S tier playbook. Not the case with these teams. You can't really pick, you know, a B or C tier team like the New Orleans Saints and be like, hey, okay, pick the Saints, so I'm going to go ahead and try and use them like they're the Seattle Seahawks. It's just not going to work. You're just going to get outclassed basically in every facet of the game, defensively for sure. Um, you know, the Saints, I don't even know if their wide receiver core I would consider better than the Seahawks. I don't even know if I'd consider their backfield better than the Seahawks. I don't know if there's a single unit in the game for the Saints or a team like the Saints who I would pick over the Seahawks other than maybe the O-line. That's The Seahawks kind of downfall is the O-line, but that's kind of uh, the point I'm trying to make. But obviously, this is going to be fluid somewhat over the year uh, because of, you know, the roster updates throughout the season, depending on how the players perform in real life. But I think this will kind of be what you're going to see in a lot of reg tournaments. I, I would be actually be surprised if you saw many teams other than just the Seahawks and Falcons. Um, I think they'll probably be 90%, 95% of the teams you see. Uh, and then the other eight, A-tier teams, such as, you know, like the Patriots, Cowboys, Steelers, you might see them a little bit, but B and C-tier teams, once in a blue moon, but you're really never going to see these teams in competitive play. Uh, so I think that's all the topics I wanted to cover. Covered the patch, covered the playbook tier list, the reg team tier lists, and the NYC tournament and kind of what that did for the meta. So uh, that's going to bring an end to this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, definitely comment. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know what I can do better for future videos. If there's anything else you would like me to cover in these meta breakdowns in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, take it easy.